You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, Young and the Restless fans. It is Soap Dirt on YouTube, and we have got your Young and the Restless two-week spoilers running from Monday, June 26, 2023, all the way through Friday, July 7th, 2023. And we've got some information for you about the July 4th holiday and how that might be impacted at your favorite CBS soap opera. Hey, before we dig into all this great info to get you ready for the next two weeks, if you haven't, please reach down, click that subscribe button, and that way you won't miss any of our promos, spoilers, predictions, casting news, all the stuff you want to know about YNR on CBS Daytime. For the first week of spoilers, we have dates and specific information. And for the second week of spoilers, we have sizzling info, but it's undated. So let's dig in. Monday, June 26 on Young the Restless is episode 187 of season 50. And we are going to see Tucker McCall pretty tired of Ashley Abbott's obsession with hating on Diane Jenkins. So he's trying to distract her into doing business with him and doing some monkey business with him both because they do get up to that on Monday. We're also going to see Kyle Abbott telling Summer Newman that he wants a formal separation. He just can't move past all her lies. Can you blame him? All right. We see crushed and upset Summer sitting down to talk with Chance Chancellor. We have wondered if these two might take comfort in each other at some point. And we see Jack Abbott being nice and forgiving to Diane, even though she admits that she lied to Kyle about something. It was something pretty benign where she told a fib to basically try and get him and Summer pulled closer back together. She had a good intent with it, so Jack's going to let that slide. All right, Tuesday on Young the Restless, it's June 27th, and it's episode 188 of season 50. Phyllis Summers is going to show up to see her buddy, lawyer Michael Baldwin. I'm sure she wants him to sort out this mess for her and keep her out of prison. He, you know, doesn't have a magic legal wand. He can just wave over her, but he is a top-notch lawyer, so we'll see. However, he does a lot of work for Victor, and I do wonder, he, he kind of backed off that while he was wrapping Diane for her case, but I do wonder if Victor is going to tell him, I don't want you to have anything to do with that woman, and will Michael bend the knee if that's what Victor says? So Summer Newman spends some time on Tuesday with Chance telling him all about her woes. And I'm curious if he tells her about his because he's thinking about moving out of the Chancellor Mansion and having Devon and Abby move in there with the kid because he says that little Dominic doesn't like to be dragged around everywhere. So we'll see if that brings a weird thing with Summer and Chance while they're spending time together. And Sally Spectra is in more emotional pain as she is reminded of her past. Then Wednesday, June 28th on Young the Restless is season 50, episode 189. Ashley Abbott is plotting revenge. So I wonder if she is mad about the press release, the newsletter that goes out to everybody that gets the Jabot newsletter, I don't know who that is, announcing Jack and Diane's engagement and that she's got this fancy new job at the company because Tucker on Monday does a lot of sexy stuff with Ashley to distract her from this whole thing because he's basically just bored and, you know, he has the attention span of a gnat. And if she doesn't start paying attention to him instead of Diane, he's going to cheat on her like he always does. That's my two cents anyway. Also midweek, Victor Newman decides to see what Nate Hastings is up to by testing him. I can't see how Nate would pass that test. He is so morally gray and bankrupt and he has no good intentions. Right now, he just wants more power and he's enjoying getting close to Victoria. But if it came down to it, would he screw over Victoria and take her job? Heck yeah. He's a dog and I am really, really enjoying him as a low-key villain. All right. Thursday, June 29th on YNR is episode 190 of season 50. And Michael and Lauren Fenmore have to talk things through and clear the air. Maybe she finds out he's been meeting with and talking to Phyllis. 
I don't know, because them clearing the air sounds like somebody's telling a secret, so maybe he admits he knows where her bestie is. We also see that same day Nick Newman has no patience left for Phyllis, so I don't know if Phyllis reaches out to him or if this is something that Summer's talking to him about. I would really love to see Nick and Phyllis in the same room face-to-face and him just letting her have it, because he's dealing with his sister being a big old bee at work. He's dealing with Sally, who's in all this pain, just emotional pain and angst over losing the baby. And then his little brother is in that same pain for that same reason. And then Nick just had to watch Faith almost get blown up by this maniac. Nick is just over it. He's had way too much and Phyllis's little reindeer games are not going to impress him. So I'm looking forward to those scenes. Friday, June 30th on YNR Season 50, Episode 181, Sharon gets a disturbing bequest from dead Cameron Karsten. She gets a box that's dropped off at the gate to the Newman Ranch, and it is a box delivered by Cameron's attorney who's handling his estate. And since she murdered him, I guess that didn't stop her from getting a bequest. In that box are some things that upset her and that force her to make some kind of decision. Kind of exciting stuff. All right. Jack is forced to do damage control on Friday. And I wonder if this has to do with the revenge game that Ashley decides to play. So the two weeks, second week of spoilers for July 3rd through 7th, these are undated. We have four to talk about. And then we're going to talk about July 4th and whether there will be a new episode or a preemption. So Nikki takes Adam by surprise. She kind of catches up with him off guard. I hope, I really hope that Nikki is sweet to Adam. And, you know, his mom's been dead a long time. This would be the perfect opportunity for Nikki to kind of be motherly with Adam. You know, she's the right age to be Adam's mom. There's no reason she can't be motherly to him. I would love it if she would tell him she's so sorry about the baby and just gave him a big hug and he hugged her back. Wouldn't that be great? Victor would love it. I would love it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I don't know if we're going to get that, but I hope it's Nikki being sweet to him because she knows he's had this loss. All right. Lily Winters makes a strategic move. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Um, Maybe she hires Elena since she just walked away from the podcast at Newman because she's disgusted by all of them. Also, we're going to see Nate celebrating a win. And I'm I'm sure that's him being, you know, COO and everything now. And then Kyle plays with fire. I have to suspect that that means he's going to be spending more time with Audra because he hits the sheets with her. And that's going to come Monday and Tuesday. All right, before we dig into the July 4th issue, if you haven't already, please reach down, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our YNR updates on your favorite CBS soap opera. Okay, so here's the thing about July 4th, 2023. Usually, Young and the Restless doesn't preempt lightly, you know, unless it's a news thing, they'll, they'll preempt the heck out of it for news. But for holidays, a lot of times they go ahead and they air a new show. Um, but unless there's some kind of sports thing going on, you know, like sometimes like the day after Christmas, you know, whenever there's sports around the holidays. But in this case, generally on July 4th, including 2022 and prior, they would run a new episode if July 4th fell during the week. However, we're in kind of a unique situation that we've not been in for many years. The WGA is on strike. That's the Writers Guild of America. Those are the people that write the soap operas. So they are are probably about out of scripts that have been written by the professional writing staff. And what happens is they can either go on hiatus until the writers can come back, or they can work with FICOR writers. FICOR writer, that means financial core. That is a WGA writer who's basically decided they can't afford to stay on strike. And they have to give up temporarily some of their membership rights in the WGA, but they can basically, basically financial core means I, I can't take this strike because my finances won't accommodate it. Even though they pay them a little bit of money while they're on strike, the union does, it's not your, your full pay. So they will work with five core people. And then sometimes the soaps will let other people write, you know, maybe people that are like 
script supervisors, people that aren't in the WGA, but that do work on the soap and that know it, because that's been the problem in years past when there was another writer's strike. There was one in like ah, 2007 or eight around there, and it went on for a hundred days. And so all the, most of the good soap writers were gone. And then they were letting basically amateurs write the show, which is funny because a lot of us think we could write a better show than they can. So because of the WGA strike, I believe that there's a chance that YNR could change their mind and preempt the episode or play a rerun instead. Just because if they do, if they're still working with material from the core writers, the usual writers, they may want to preserve one more episode to air. We'll see right now on TV Guide and the Comcast network. It both shows fresh episode numbers for July 4th. If that changes, we will definitely let you know. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 